This is the home video that automotive fans have been waiting for from Best Film and Video. Mustang legend began in 1964. Ford realized that baby boomers would be reaching driving age and would buy 40% of the cars. Therefore, they designed a sporty car that would appeal to the young and the young at heart. April 16, 1964, all three networks ran Mustang commercials like these. Quoting directly, coming April 17th, the unexpected, the Ford Mustang, a brilliant new kind of car, a new generation of Fords for a new breed of Americans who want bucket seats, stick shift action, who collect sports car badges and trading stamps, who want the elegance of a European touring car, and until now had to settle for basic transportation. This is for them. This is Mustang. With an unexpected variety of options, Mustang is the one car designed to be designed by you. Get ready to meet the unexpected April 17th at your Ford dealers. Mustang is only days away. These wild Mustangs have become symbolic with the car. John Conley at the J. Walter Thompson Advertising Agency came up with the name after researching animal names at the Detroit Public Library. Ford continued to pique America's interest with its commercials. Mustang, Mustang's coming, April 17th. The unexpected Ford Mustang. At the New York World's Fair, April 17th, the Mustang made its debut as a hardtop and a convertible. The reaction was pandemonium to its sporty, youthful style. Ford dealers had to close their doors because of the crush. A Mustang was sold by lottery because of the demand, and the winner slept in the car until his check cleared. A truck driver mesmerized by the car in a San Francisco showroom plowed through the window. 100,000 were sold in the first four months, 1,000 a day in 1964. Frank Sinatra and Debbie Reynolds, among other celebrities, ordered one the first day. The phenomenal success of the Mustang was due in part to its appeal to the young, but more importantly, it caught the imagination of everyone, of every age. It felt younger driving one. In some 1964 commercials, Ford was able to proudly boast that Tiffany & Company, so renowned for elegance and style, had given the Ford Mustang its coveted gold medal award for excellence. The commercial also pointed out that it was the only time Tiffany had given an automobile an award. So eat your heart out, Ferrari and Porsche. And all this beauty and sporty fun with seemingly unlimited options at an affordable price. $2,368 FOB Detroit. 
Lee Iacocca, general manager of the Ford division, had insisted it cost less than a dollar a pound. Well, America went Mustang crazy. Besides showing its obvious beauty, the Mustang commercials boasted about the wide choice of options, which were the largest of any car. Bucket seats, vinyl upholstery, carpeting, padded instrument panel, full wheel cover, and surprisingly roomy trunk. However, nothing conveys the beauty of these options like a lovingly restored classic. This one has beautiful embossed horses on the seats. This original beauty contains the actual Mustang cigarettes given away with the car. And the splendid sporty trunk with Mustang bag and wheel cover. The 60s was a time of change, exploration, and experimentation. There were hippies, the women's movement, the war in Vietnam, Kennedy and King, civil rights, the space race, and the Beach Boys. Mustang was aimed at the youth market and those seeking a sense of freedom and searching for something radically different in a car. It was a sports car with a back seat. Fun to drive alone, with a friend or another couple. It was versatile, practical, and affordable. It was a car designed for its era, the right car at the right time. This 1966 Mustang GT has the blacked out grille, longer nose, GT stripes, and five gauge instrument panel. Optional eight track tape deck and comfort control. Also pony emblem floor mats. This is a 1965 high-performance 289 V8 with 271 bhp at 6,000 rpm. The first 289s appeared in June 1964 and proved very popular. The fastback came with functional air extractor vents. The Mustang commercials were often parables of change. Become a Mustanger and become younger, wilder, and freer. These Mustangers take on the cavalry and beat them. Meanwhile, the staid librarian dreaming of Mexico gets into her Mustang, lets her hair down, heads south of the border, and becomes a matador. The timid became brave, the weak strong, and the sedate became wild. When you became a Mustanger, bullies didn't kick sand in your face anymore, and you could take on the world. This 1966 GT Coupe comes with a high-performance Special K engine. Heavy metal thunder, with the wind. In 1966, the front grille changed its honeycomb for an egg crate effect and had horizontal chrome stripes with no heavy chrome bars attaching to the horse corral. Rocker panel moldings became standard on 66s. The buyer could now specify automatic transmission with the 289 Hypo engine option. The people at this car show drove hundreds of miles to join together with other enthusiasts for no monetary gain, only for the joy of having done something well, showing off their pride and joy and swapping stories. It is these people who have enshrined these cars and made them classics. As between the 71 on the left and the 69 on the right, styling changes were often in the details. The 69 convertible on the left no longer has the horse in its corral, but alone on the right of the grill, as opposed to the emblem of the 71 car to the right. This unique modified Mustang is an eye catcher. The great sports cars always use race car engineering and styling. The Ford GT, which stunned the world in international racing competition at Le Mans, Daytona, and Sebring, became a high-performance production car.
distinctive with Mustang GT stripes, fog lamps, five cluster instrument panel, sport steering, front wheel disc brakes, heavy duty stabilizer bar, flare dual trumpet exhaust, and a 289 cubic inch four barrel V8 engine. The Cobra, an intimidating car designed by engineer and race car driver Carol Shelby for those seeking ultimate performance. Shelby's legendary Cobras intimidated everyone on the race course, and then as high-performance production Mustangs, they attracted a large following. They epitomized power and speed and oozed brute force. Shelby sold a fleet of special GT350H models to Hertz, finished in black with gold stripes. Hertz rented them at major airports, but often found they came back with definite signs of having been raced, so they were dropped by Hertz. The KR stands for King of the Road. The GT500 KR was powered by Ford's 428 Cobra jet engine. Not a car for the timid. It nevertheless attracted female buyers, as did this one. The Cobra insignia graces the gas cap. This GT350 Cobra's aptly named Snake Charmer by its original female buyer. Shelby had always used a real wood steering wheel and detailing. 1968 was the first year for production Cobra convertibles. Before 68, Shelby had made six a year as gifts for friends. The 68s were made by Ford in Livonia, Michigan. The Mustang II Cobras continued to be popular. Ford made a number of other tough Mustangs, often giving them names derived from test plane terms, Mach 1, 2, and 3, and the Boss. Mach 1, of course, representing the sound barrier. The Boss 302 appeared in 1969. The 302 engine hit 60 in six seconds. The rear sport slats and spoiler were options. has racing style hood pins and Shelby-like hood scoop. The 1970 Ford Mustang commercials boasted the boss was back. Here Ford shows the Mustang boss being forged at its own steel factory. Back in 1964, Ford advertised that it had changed and always in the forefront of progress had become the first car manufacturer to build its own million dollar steel making facility. A new factory to produce the exciting new unexpected Mustang. The Mustang was born at the Ford Research and Engineering Center in Dearborn, Michigan. This 1964 documentary, The Mustang, shows us the evolution of the Mustang prototype. Roy Lund, manager of Vehicle Concepts, discusses creating a sports car with VP in charge of styling, Gene Bordenay, and VP in charge of engineering, Herb Misch, both of whom endorsed the project. It was purely an experimental car. Here they are testing the stress on a scale model. The actual frame was made in California by Troutman and Barnes. The engine was placed in the midsection with front wheel drive. Design fell to styling. After many preliminary drawings, they came up with the final design, clean entry, stylized roll bar, and functional air scoops on the side. The emblem was first created on paper, then in clay and wood, and finally in metal. The special body is first developed in clay, starting with a wooden frame called an armature, over which hot modeling clay is pushed and formed. 
When cool, the clay is perfect for sculpting. The bridge they're pulling ensures the symmetry of both sides. The clay is then covered with plastic sheeting called Dynox, which looks like painted metal. With the clay model approved, a female plaster mold is made. After the mold hardens, it's treated and coated with resin. Glass cloth is applied, smoothing the cloth to fit the contours. After several layers of cloth and resin are laminated, the forms are put back in place. After the fiberglass and resin are cured, the forms are removed and the accurate fiberglass body form is finished. It's then subjected to wind tunnel tests which confirmed the car's aerodynamic body and proved the effectiveness of the side vents. Fiberglass model is sent to Troutman and Barnes along with specifications. Roy Lund checks that everything will function properly. The one-piece seats are fitted into the frame. They hammer and coax the aluminum into precise and graceful shapes. The aluminum sections are checked carefully against the fiberglass mold for accuracy before being welded and joined to the frame. The one-piece competition windshield is added and then the instrument panel. Two radiators with thermostatically controlled fans are placed behind the side intake vents. The steering wheel assembly is designed with a rack and pinion steering gear, flexible shaft, and three inches of fore and aft adjustment. Sterling Moss, the famous race car driver, greets the crowd from the Mustang before the start of the American Grand Prix at Watkins Glen. Car and Driver was the first of many magazines to recognize Mustang's engineering and styling innovations. The Mustang pulls up and is engulfed by students at the University of Miami. Showing the dual exhaust system, turn signals and stoplight. The Mustang emblem is the rear deck latch. The engine has a single carburetor, high speed cams, 11 to 1 compression ratio, 60 degree V4 block on 92 cubic inches. The lights swivel for night driving. The license plate can be down for regular driving or up for racing. The original prototype was named after the American World War II fighter plane, the Mustang. By coincidence, the production car carried the same name. It tests well on all types of road surfaces. Clocked here at the Daytona Speedway at 120 miles per hour at a comfortable 6,100 RPM. The Mustang prototype, a dream car that would evolve into one of the most successful car stories ever. Ford never forgot that Mustang evolved out of a racing car and proudly reminded its public. At the Indianapolis Speedway, they show off the new 1979 Mustang. Rather brazenly, Mustang takes on Porsche to prove it can match it in acceleration, cornering, braking, etc. And all at an affordable price.
Then, under the grueling desert sun, Mustang takes on the Camaro and beats it in 7.3 seconds. Mustang, like most truly classic cars, has changed in style over the years, affected by the taste and demands of the car buying public. But like all true sports cars, it has retained a mean, lean, tough line for those enthusiasts. During the last decade, Mustang has continued to perfect its engineering, stressing greater performance and handling, yet remaining affordable and compact. The fuel crisis in the mid-70s had forced many changes on the car market, and Mustang managed to adapt. Public demand has always had the greatest influence on design, from the big, roomy house on wheels to the fuel-efficient, practical small cars and the safety-conscious, temporary death of the convertible, which is now back stronger than ever. But all through these changes, the Mustang stayed basically a sports car with a back seat. The Mustang is a tremendous success story. In 1964, it captured America's imagination with ads of its revolutionary new style intercut with shots of beautiful wild horses. Mustangs were even nicknamed pony cars. These free-spirited Mustangs became symbolic with the sports car, while the original prototype's namesake, the fighter plane, faded into obscure history. The 1964 production Mustang was virtually unchanged from the white clay model designed under studio chief Joe Orris and Dave Ash, who worked on the original T-Bird. They called their model the Cougar, and only the tail section, frontal area, and most importantly, the name were changed in the production car. As they say, the rest is history. Iacocca had always fancied animal names for cars, and in his book likes to point out part of the Mustang's success to the fact that the Mustang is a wild horse and runs whichever way it chooses. That's why the emblem horse runs to the left instead of to the right as racehorses run. Fifty-two couples of mixed economic and social backgrounds were invited to comment on the 1964 Mustang prototype. The high-income couples loved the design and the lower-income couples saw it as a status symbol. Everyone's guess of its price was much higher than the actual cost. That clinched everyone's enthusiasm. As legend goes, Carol Shelby's name, Cobra, came to him in a dream. If his doctor hadn't told him he couldn't race anymore due to a heart problem, and if Ferrari had agreed to become part of Ford, Shelby's Mustang Cobras might never have been produced. Everyone wanted to own a Mustang, even if they weren't old enough to drive one. Here's an accurate battery-operated scale model that was very popular. created the Mustang, but its enthusiasts, the collectors, restorers, and those who dream of owning one, have made it a classic and ensure that the legend lives on. Down the same old strip Gotta find a new place Where the kids are hip My buddies and me Are getting real well known Yeah, the bad guys know us And they leave us alone It's never been beat And we never missed yet With the girls we meet None of the guys go 
instead it cause it wouldn't be right to leave your best girl home on a Saturday night. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. 